or I bet what chapter 7, it talks about Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh. So then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. Meaning that he is, in a way, if you, if you look at this, um, of course, God is over everything. And God has put Moses over Pharaoh. And Moses, of course, like I said uh, in the past videos, I've made ancient, or in ancient Egypt, uh, Pharaohs believed they were like gods in a way, like a, like a type of an antichrist. Not the Antichrist, which is Obama, but uh, of course they believed they were a Antichrist. You know, they believed they were gods. So with with God making Moses over Pharaoh, you know, it's it's, it's kind of like uh, you know, God. Um, of course, Pharaoh, since, since Pharaoh believes, believes that he's a god or Antichrist, whatever you want to say, he's kind of like a puppet of Satan. You know, you know. And and by God making Moses over Pharaoh, it's showing that God is over everything, even Satan himself. Because of course, like I said in the past video, Satan has to get permission from God to do things here on earth. So Satan is not in hell, as many people, as many people think. Satan is here on earth, roaming around the world, still and killing and destroying what you know what he can do. He travels from earth to heaven and back, getting permission, getting permission from God to do things here on earth. But anyway, it says, um, I just thought that was uh, very important to say. It says, uh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. Uh, meaning, Moses, and many, many, many people don't understand this, Moses wasn't the one who did all the talking, it was Aaron. Moses told Aaron what God told him, then Aaron w would, would tell, Mo or then Aaron would tell Pharaoh, what Moses or what God told Moses. So it's actually Aaron's the one who did all the talking. Moses just told Aaron what God told him. So Aaron could tell Pharaoh what God told Moses. So anyway. It says, uh, you shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out go to go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Rather right talks that's predestination election. God will God will harden those those who have not been uh, predestined to be saved, they have a hardened heart, which means that they have a heart of stone, heart of a rock, pretty much, and their heart will not they, their heart will not respond to the gospel. Those who have not those that is those who have not been predestined by God to be saved, they have a hardened heart. Their hearts will not respond to the gospel, and they hate and they hate God because they continue in sin. They don't repent. And those now now those who have been predestined by God to be saved. Um, their hearts will be convicted by the Holy Spirit by the gospel, of course. Their hearts will respond to the gospel. They will be convicted by the Holy Spirit, which will then lead them to repent their sins and then come to for salvation. So yes, God can harden who he wants to harden and unharden who he wants, who he wants to unharden. And God chooses what he, who, he, who he wants to save. God chooses, man. We don't choose him. He chooses us. Just just read the Bible for yourself and you find it, you find it out. God chooses us. We don't choose him. It says, um, and though I and though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. So God has already predestined Pharaoh not to listen to to Moses and Aaron. Um, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my host, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am that I am the Lord. No, that he's he's Jesus. When I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out out people of Israel from from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded, commanded them. Now, now Moses was eight years old, or not, not eight years old, but eighty years old. I didn't see the why there. Uh, he was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty-three years old when they split. When they split to Pharaoh, and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, "When Pharaoh says says to you, prove yourselves by working a miracle, then, you sh then see God's already predestined uh, Pharaoh." On what to say? He's already predestined it. Yes, you know, he's already predestined all these all these things that happened. Um, he he he's, he he has even a predestined what Pharaoh will say. He's already given Pharaoh the heart of stone. So of course God has predestined everything. You know, God has predestined. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. It says um. Uh, it says uh, by working a miracle, and then, you, and, then you, and then you shall say to Aaron, "Take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent or a snake." So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff just before Pharaoh, 
and his servants, and it became a serpent, or a snake, of course. Pharaoh summoned the wise men, the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret act, or by the secret arts. Of course, they were, they were Satanists, though. They were all into demonic stuff. Um, for each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. Um, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Uh, many of that. But what, now, what, now what this means is God allowed Aaron's staff to swallow up um, Pharaoh's sorcerers or magicians' staffs. Now, now what that means is God was show. Okay, like I said, ancient Egypt, they believed in they believed in many, in many gods, which were demons. Um, they were pretty much controlled. I mean, of course, gods over everything, but they were, you know, their their gods were were demons. You know, they were control, they were controlled by the devil himself. Ancient uh, Egypt is very into demonic, satanic stuff. Look at the pharaohs; they believed they were gods or type of or type of antichrist. Um, I mean, they were very evil, demonic, satanic people. They were very evil people. And by God allowing Aaron's staff to eat the staffs of Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's sorcerers, it means this. God, who, who's over everything, of course, especially over Aaron and Moses, will destroy Satan. Because God takes Aaron's staff that had become a snake and swallows the staffs of Pharaoh's sorcerers or magicians who were controlled by the devil. So it's, in a way, here's another proof. Here, here, another way, like I said, here, here another way, there's another sign of God overcoming the devil. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Of course, God, God's, of course, Christ. It's just amazing. Um, anyway, uh, the sword left off that. Um, it says, still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, because so, so God was was still um, hardened, or hardening Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. The first plague, the water turned to blood. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, because God hadn't hadn't unhardened it yet. He refuses to let the people to he he refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, and he is going out of the water. Stay on the bank of the Nile to meet him. That is the Nile River, of course, in Egypt, to meet him. And take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. Or a snake, and you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, or the God of the Jews, Jesus Christ, sent me to you, saying, let, let, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus, the Lord, thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord, as of course Christ. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn into blood. The fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink. And the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile, and they will be sick of their stomach because of the blood. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all their pools of water, so that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in the vessels of wood and the vessels of stone. God's going to destroy Egypt pretty much, is what he's saying. Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of, the, of his servants. He looked up the staff and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water of the Nile turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile died, and the, and the Nile stink, so, the, so, that, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the, but the magicians of, Egypt, of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, because God hadn't unhardened it yet. And he would not listen to them. As the Lord has said, Pharaoh turned and went to his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water, the water of the Nile. Seven full days, or about a week, passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. We'll be right back with chapter 8.